Hello, options traders. Welcome, everyone. And you've probably all heard this before, but that the smart money tends to step in when things are down, things are looking bleak. People want to take these long term positions when volumes are down. The smart money comes in to buy. Conversely, we get a lot of the retailers, a lot of the newbies out there. When markets are flying high and the news is positive and everything's great, that's when they want to jump in. And unfortunately, it's usually at a top. So is there a way that we could measure what's happening with the market relative to these volumes? And that's exactly what the negative volume index can do for you. So let's take a look at the NVI. The negative volume index was created by a guy named Paul Dysart back in the 1930s. And in his version, he looked at the actual raw numbers for the changes in the stock market, or what we might call the advanced decline, advancing issues minus the declining issues. Well, this was modified some years ago by a guy named Norman Fosback, who said we should really be using percentages. What was the percentage change in the market up or down? And he's got good points because stock prices move in percentages. But regardless of which version you use, the idea is always the same, that the smart money will buy, in other words, the market is up when volumes are down. So I've color coded those to help you understand the formula when we get to that section. So just remember what we're really looking for is how many days is the market up when the volumes are down? That's what it's trying to record. Now it's important to emphasize that the index does not record changes in volume. I know it looks weird. It's called the negative volume index. You would think it's recording the number of times that the volumes are negative. It's got nothing to do with the volumes. The volumes are just the trigger and what it's recording are changes in the market. Now, when I say market, it is best used for indexes. So typically the S&P 500, NASDAQ 100, things like that. Can you use it for shares of stock? Yes, but you're going to find that you can get really radical deviations. It might work well in one instance and not well in another. You're gonna get a lot of false signals. I would really use it just for the indexes. Now, for all the new traders out there who might not understand exactly what volume is, it's simply looking at the number of shares that traded for an index or for shares of stock. For those of you who are using the E-Trade platform, very simple to put on. Just click up here on studies. And if you're not seeing it here in this menu, you'll need to click on all studies down here. And once you find it, just choose volume. And when you do, you can also color code the bars. I'm just gonna leave them as these standard color codes. And there's your volumes. So how do you read this? Well, for example, let's take a look at this big bar right here. And that happened on 2.6 of this year. So if we look at the top of that bar and look over to the right, you can see about 348 million shares of the spiders traded that day. Now, if we look at the next day down here, big drop, look at this over on the right, about 168 million. That's declining volume. That's what we're looking for. How many times did the market go up when we got declines in volume? Now, just for another little side note here, don't get confused with the red and green color coatings on these bars down here. That has nothing to do with advancing and declining volumes. What causes these bars to get color coded red and green is what's happening up here with prices. So on this date, we had a green candle and therefore you can see straight down below it lines up with a green volume bar. What makes it advancing or declining is what happens to the height of the bar. So you can see on this date right here, we went from this red candle and down here. That was declining volume, even though this bar is green. So again, don't get caught up into the reds and greens. Look at the changes in the size of the bars. That's what we're looking for when we're talking about declining volume. All right, so how does this index work? Well, it starts at an arbitrary level of 1,000. Some platforms will start at 100. And from that value, we're just going to look at two different numbers. These are the key numbers that make the formula work. The first one we might just call the net value or the day-to-day -day change. And I'll show you what I'm talking about there with these changes in the index. And then we're going to look at the cumulative net value. And it is this cumulative number that creates the negative volume index. So how are we going to read the NVI? Well, here's how we're going to construct it. If the volume is up on a particular day, we're just going to ignore the change in the market. So it doesn't matter if the market was up 2%, down a half a percent, doesn't matter. If the volume is up, we just ignore it. 
However, if the volume is down, we look at the index change. Again, not the volume change, the change in the index, and we will then record it. This is what I was just talking about with the day-to-day -day recording. And then we're going to keep a running total of these changes. That's the cumulative. And that's what's going to create our negative volume index. Now, in addition to this, they use a 255-day moving average to identify the trends. And Fosbach, one of the founders of this indicator here, says that there is a 95% chance for a bull market when the NVI is above the 255-day moving average. And he says there is also a 53% chance for a bear market when it is below this moving average. Now, a couple of points here. First of all, I'm not sure how accurate these are. I don't know how in-depth his studies were or what, over what time frames they covered. Second of all, sometimes people say, well, if there's a 95% chance for it to be up, there must be a 5% chance for a bear market when it's below. And that's just because these are not independent events. So statistically, those numbers could be true. But the main thing you want to focus on is that there is an overwhelmingly large chance for the market to be in a bull market when you are above the NVI. And that's what you want to watch for, especially for all of you using the long-term investments. I know it can be confusing. So like a lot of these technical indicators, they're better demonstrated by an example. So I've downloaded some data here going back three months. Today is 919 of 2018. So you can see three months ago is 619. And the S&P 500 closed at 275.5. And on that day, we had about 97 and a half million for a volume. Because this is our beginning data point here, I'm going to give it the arbitrary value of 100. Again, some platforms might use 1,000. It's just our starting point. Then we take a look at the next day. Index went up a little bit, 275.97. And if you do the percentage change, going from 275.50 to 275.97, that is a 0.17% increase. However, on that same day, notice that the volume, big drop in volume, went from about 97.5 million down to almost 54 million. Okay, nearly a 45% drop in volume. So I've color-coded that in red. This is what we're looking to record. Remember, the rule is, if the volume is down, we want to know what happened to the index on that day. So was the volume down? Yes, it was. The index went up 0.17%. So I'm going to record on my, this is my day-to-day -day column right here, the net volume index would be 0.17. So I'm going to take the beginning number of 100, add 0.17, and this is now my cumulative net value for the index here. And of course, this is what's going to become our negative volume index right here. Let's do another one. 621, index went to 274.24. It dropped by 0.63%. What happened to volume? It went from 53.7 million to 71 million. That was an increase in volume of 32%. So remember what the rule is. If volume increases, ignore this. Doesn't matter if it's up or down. And so this is a zero right here. Now I've, I've color coded these with a white font so they're just easier to see, but that's really a zero there. So when I take the old value of 100.17 and add zero, obviously it doesn't change. Come down here to the next day. Went from 274.24 to 274.74, slight increase of 0.18. What happened to the volume? Big drop in volume, almost 23%. So did the volume go down? Yes, it did. If it's down, we record this number, whether it's up or down. Doesn't matter what this number is. Just record it if the volume is down. So because that was positive 0.18, put that in that cell. I take the old number of 100.17, add 0.18, I get 100.35. It might look like we always increase, and that's not true. Here's a good example down here. We had a decrease in volume almost 34% drop. So do we record what happened in the index? Yes, we do. On that day, the market actually dropped. So a little counterintuitive to what the theory says. Because remember what they're saying is that when you get the drop in the volume, usually the smart money would step in and push prices higher. This would be an exception. We got minus 0.35 in the index. So we still record it. So the old number was 101.36. I subtract off my 0.35%. That's the change in the index. I get 101.01. .01. And we just continue on down the list. And then this down here, three months later, this would be our 
negative volume index for this three month period. So that's the way that it works. All right, let's go over to the E-Trade platform and take a look at the NVI index. Very easy to do, just click on studies right here. And if you don't see it in your most frequently used list up here, you'll need to click on all studies. And over here, the only one under the ends, negative volume index, choose that one. We're going to leave it as the closing prices. The developers suggest using an exponential moving average, 255 day. We can change that, but I'm going to leave the defaults. We can also change our colors. I'm going to leave those as well. And we choose save. And then down here is our NVI. Let me go ahead and raise these up a bit so we can see them a little easier. So now if you go over here to the right, you can see that it's showing about 318 for the current value. The reason it's not matching with my Excel spreadsheet is that they are going back 255 days. I only went back 30 days. So the numbers aren't going to match, but the formula was exactly the same. The 255 day moving average is down here at about 275, almost 276. But the thing you want to watch for is this. Is this black line, this is our NVI, our index. If it is above the 255 day moving average here in red, then there is a very strong probability, about 95%, according to one of the developers there, that we are in a bull market. And therefore, if we see any pullbacks in there, we should really just kind of ignore them. They're short term. The smart money is stepping in to buy. So take a look back here in February. Remember when we had that great big drop here in the index? What was happening overall? Money was flowing in. We still had more days where the markets were being pushed up, even though we saw declining volumes. So this is the thing that you would want to look for for your long term. If this black line is above the red, then kind of ignore these little dips. And of course, if you want, you could always come up here to your chart, choose studies. Let's come down here to moving averages and let's put on a 255 day moving average exponential to kind of match the NVI down here. So once again, you can see, even though the market had these big dips, we were still well above the 255 day moving average and the NVI was well above 255 as well. So these should have really been buying opportunities. These were really nothing to fear. Now, obviously for all the short term day traders out there, it's a different story. The NVI is definitely more for people looking for the long term trends. But remember, that's where the money is, especially for those who use options because you can hedge roll more positions to stay in these long term trends but greatly manage the risk. If you'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course and Strategy Lab at optionsa-z.com. And please join us at the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z. You can find a link in the description below.